car is, and that is, wow, that's a huge number. That's a lot of zeros. I mean, that took up my little phone screen. I looked up on Google, I said 10 to the 157th power, zero is just going across my screen all the way down my phone. I was like, wow, that's a big number. But it's true. No one can be just like Christ. Only one man can live a perfect life, and that's our Lord and Savior. Amen. My fifth point, and I showed this point to Jordan, and Jordan said, man, you could write a whole message about this one. The truth of the resurrection. The eye, many eyewitnesses that were, uh, that were around. I'm going to read in verse, um, or in the book of Luke, if you would like to turn with me. Luke 20, uh, chapter number 24. I'll wait till just for everybody to get there. But the eyewitnesses that were around at the time when Jesus was on the cross of Calvary, when they wrapped, took his body off that cross, wrapped him, in, uh, wrapped him in the cloth, and put him in that tomb. It says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Oh, no. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Now, who do you think the two men were? They sure weren't the Roman soldiers. Because I bet you those Roman soldiers were on the ground crying or either ran back home to cry. Because that's, that's just crazy if you see it. Two angels coming down from heaven to roll a stone away. That's, that's just, that's terrifying right there. But it goes on to say, And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Amen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was in Galilee, yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on that third day rise again. Just the thing is, uh, just what it says is that it was, the tomb was empty. There's no one in there. It says in John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, Father but by me. Amen. That goes to show you that our God's not dead. Right. Our God is living in our hearts today. And in our hearts today. And he has shown through us, through, throughout our lives, how his marvelous works have begun. And they keep going today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. The body of Christ was never produced. They never saw the body of Christ come out after. Uh, now, there was, the disciples saw, the, uh, saw Christ, but it was the spirit of Christ. They never saw, people never saw the actual body come out of the tomb. But people still don't realize that God's alive. And that's the thing that just, it, hurt, it like crushes my heart when people tell me that they don't know Christ as their Lord. I had a, a friend on my basketball team. I'm trying so hard to lead him to Christ. But... We went to Heartland Bible Baptist College for a basketball game uh, just last last week on Tuesday, and a, pers a person who graduated from that school came to uh, preach the message and said, and came back and said, uh, I called my friend. I said, Hey, come down to the front with me. And I said, I, We kept, went down to the front. It was hard to get him down to the front. But I said, do you know where you're going to go when you die? And he said, yeah. And I said, okay, well, where is that? And he said, heaven. And I said, are you sure? And he said, yeah. And I said, which in my mind, what the kid, how this, uh, his attitude and the way he acts is not the way God would intend for us to act. And I knew that, that he wasn't. His heart is not set. And I'm not talking bad about him. I'm not cri criticizing him or anything. But he told me after when we were walking to lunch, 
I, he said, I said, are you, are you, I just, I didn't mean to embarrass you or anything. I just wanted to make sure you know where you're going. He said, I'm not saved. And I, that had kind of made me go, it was kind of like a shot. Like you just got shot in the heart and it just like, whoa. And just like blows you back. I was, I was like, do what now? And he said, I'm not saved. And I said, but you just told me you were going to heaven. And he said, yeah. And I said, you can't go to heaven unless you're saved by Jesus Christ. Right, right. Amen. And he said, well, I'll get, I said, dude, you got to get saved. I'm not pushing you to get saved. But if we died on the way, to, uh, on the way home tonight, we, you would spend an eternity in hell. And I said, I do not want to see your brethren go to hell and, and not be with us in heaven. And he said, I'll, I'm just not ready yet. I'll get later on. I'll get ready. I'll be, I'll get saved later on. And I said, no, it's gotta be, it's gotta be as soon as possible. You got to have God talk to your heart and you have to get saved as soon as possible. And just, he needs prayer. I mean, he's like my best friend. He's one of my best friends on the basketball, on my basketball team. In which all of my basketball team is like my is like my brothers. They're my, my family. But as God says this, we got to pray for one another. And I pray for him every morning after I read my day, a daily Bible verse. Uh, and I pray for him and I say, Lord, touch his heart. Clint, uh, just touch him, talk to him, and just let him get saved, please. Because I do not want him to die and go to hell and spend an eternity in hell. I want him to go with us and be in those mansions that God has created for us. The death of the, uh, my letter, uh, letter D is the death of the disciples. He show, uh, God's word shows us that the truth of his word is by the death of the disciples. As he, I've Looked up and saw how uh, the many disciples of the uh, disciples who all died, uh, how they died, and it's crazy. Back then, they they killed people crazy ways. I'm, I was like blown out of my mind. But James was executed. Peter was crucified. Andrew was crucified. Thomas, they called doubting Thomas, was burned. Philip was crucified. Matthew was beheaded. Nathaniel was crucified. James the Lesser was beaten with a fuller's club. I looked up the fuller's club and that, that's just, whoa, that's crazy. Paul was beheaded. Matthias was stoned. Judas, that is, was beaten. And John died of natural, John was the only person who died of natural causes. He didn't get tortured or anything. I bet you John was thankful for that. He didn't want to die tortured by torture, but still, we see that the death of all these disciples, why wouldn't that lead that we see that they walked with Christ for the three and a half years he was on the earth? We saw that they talked with him. They ate with him. They probably slept either in the same tent or if they slept in tents or slept around the, uh, a campfire or something if they, had camp if they built campfires. They were around him all the time in those three and a half years. Well, some of them moved, uh, went away, but God called them back. But still, most of these people, these disciples were with God for the three and a half years. Why don't people think that God is not alive? Why don't they think that God is real? I don't understand. God has done so many things in our, in our lives and has showed us so many marvelous actions throughout this world. And people still don't believe. I don't understand. Also, that goes along with this is the millions of changed lives that have gone through many of just sermons and many of um, preaching things of just camp, like youth camps. That's a good example. Youth camps. I love youth camp. The food's not always great, but youth camp. <laughs> just the different types of preaching that are, go uh, that are uh, going on. We... Just this last year, we had um, the preacher talked about. Uh, what was it? Oh man, he talked. To, uh, it was in Genesis chapter thirty-nine. 
He talked talked about what is his name? My mind just looked like Joe. Was it Joe? <laughs> no. Joseph. That's it. Wow, my mind went totally blank. My bad, people. But he talked about Joseph in the life. He went throughout that whole week, just going through each chapter of the life of Joseph and how his brothers wanted to kill him, and. He stood strong in his faith for God and did everything that God wanted him to do. And then y'all know the story. He went on and was um, he was the became the hot or the my mind is my daughter. He went to the second highest of the and uh, was it Pilate or Pharaoh's Man, my brain is dead this morning. But he was second highest in Pharaoh's house. And that's pretty amazing, too, because it's Pharaoh. He's over everything. But he trusted him so much that he could leave him alone to do whatever he wanted in his house and not have to care that he's going to steal anything, he's going to do anything bad. And which we all know that, it, uh, this, uh, that his wife would try to get him to do bad things. And uh, Joseph was like, no, and then he got thrown into jail. Which Pharaoh, knowing that the time of that day, uh, in the time of that day, you could see just by these disciples' deaths that he could have killed him right on the spot. He could have had him crucified, stoned, uh, just he could have murdered him right on the spot, but he didn't. He just threw him in jail because he knew Joseph wouldn't do that because of where his heart was. It shows uh, my last point is the truth of Christianity. Christianity is the only religion, like I said, that teaches that God became man and died for us on the cross of Calvary. I, I'm going to close or with this verse. Uh, just It touched my heart. It's 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So I ask you today, if somebody came up to you this afternoon and asked, who is Jesus that the preacher was talking about? Are you ready to give an answer? Yeah. Are you ready for if God calls you and you're on the judgment and he's, uh, you're sitting at that standing before the judgment seat, are you ready to give an answer to God of what you've done, of your mistakes? And are you ready to tell him that, Lord, I'm a sinner. Are you ready for people? Are you ready to go out in your daily life and to give an answer to others? Just, that verse just speaks so many <coughs> words, and it just—it doesn't say just give an answer. It says give an answer with fear, meekness, and fear, and just God has so many. Ways that he can show us to give an answer to somebody. He's shown us through a lot of a lot of books in the Bible how other people have given answers. And I just pray that when it comes to time that I have to give an answer, that I'm ready. And I and it's just not a it's not a thing where you sit down and you're ready. It's an everyday process. Every day you have to you have to be ready to give that answer. Brother Brad. Thank y'all.
You might say, and just like Brother Colin said when he was eight years old, I was the same way when I was 12. I thought I knew Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior because I walked down the aisle and I told the pastor I want to be saved. But do you know the big difference between being 12 and 16 years ago? Is that I really meant it 16 years ago. I was just going through the motions when I was 12. Nothing <coughs> There's a change, folks. There's a definite change in desire in your heart who you want to serve. The creator of the creation. Luke 24, 5. I don't know if you caught this, but the Lord just said, pow. It says, and as they were afraid, they bowed down their pieces. God Himself was in the presence of them and the angels there before them. And they bowed down. When's the last time you bowed down to God Himself? And they said unto them, Why seek you living among the dead? Jesus Christ is alive. Amen. If you don't know it, I pray today that you will come to know Him walk out those doors. Pray for those that are lost. Pray for this young man. We don't have to know his name. All we have to do is pray. We pray, God's going to do something. Because I've seen it in my own life when others are around. Thank you so much for the message this morning. So we go to the Lord in a time of invitation. These altars are open. You can come and bow in front of the seat here. You can take care of business right where you're at. Come as you are. This morning, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If not, why are, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Is your response the same as this young man? Oh, I'll just keep my life in order. I'm just going to do what I want to do. But my response to that, you're not here. Not guaranteed the minute you step out that door that something won't happen to you. Maybe before you step out that door. Do you know Jesus has not come now? Number two, you can stand before me and say, Brother Brad, I know today if I was to die, I'd be in the presence of the Lord. Because like Colin asked, are you ready to stand before the Lord the way you've been living your life? If not, we got business to take care of. Number three, maybe you're here today. The Lord's been speaking your heart about coming to join the membership here at the City of Mr. Church. God's been added to the church, and we praise God for that. It's because of your faithfulness, folks, to Him. He blesses. The Lord's leading you here today. Why not today? Why not today? As they play, the Lord spoke to your heart. It's our time for song. Yeah.
what a what a tremendous witness in taking your friend to the altar. Amen? Amen. When's the last time we took our friend to the altar? Making sure that their eternity is set forever. What a great example and great witness. As we all stand this morning, we'll be dismissed. Just a couple of announcements. Remember the lunch back here. Amen? And, uh, and, uh, as you stand right here, and everybody come this way, and I don't think anybody's, if you parked out there, please come this way this morning, and uh, hopefully you can stay for lunch, but offer him a right hand in fellowship, let him know you're praying for him, and uh, I'll have his family come up here and stand with him, and just remember our lunch today, also just remember our afternoon service following our lunch, and uh, just uh, remember uh, the announcements in the bulletin there. And uh, just look over those. Uh, just remember our nursing home ministry. The Lord's been blessing there. Uh, we've been averaging 20 in both locations at the Wheeler Place and the Gainesville Health and Rehab. The Lord continues to open doors there, folks. He continues to open doors. And uh, just also remember our mission drive to help us build our fence out front for our kiddos. So we can uh, fence that off so we don't have to worry about them getting out in the street. Or somebody coming by and taking off with them. Uh, without precautions there. So save your aluminum cans. Uh, you know we're selling the sodas in the back to help go for that. Also, we drop the can in the sack and it goes towards that as well. And so just remember that as our mission fund as we start with that. And so other announcements in there, just remember those. And uh, any other announcements that I did not mention? I don't think so. God is great. Amen. 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 It's good to have our guest with us this morning. Hope that you come back and be a part of our services. And uh, it's good to have the Ashlock family with us today. And you're, I'm sure we'll have you back. Amen. Amen. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer. And as we dismiss, Brother Crowder, would you ask the Lord to dismiss us this morning? Heavenly Father, we just uh, come to the throne of grace this morning. Thank you for the bread of life we heard of broke. Ask you to bless Brother Collins and uh, yeah, your Lord and all of his endeavors for you. Pray to have my father, children, lead and guide him and protect him. Your Lord, I just ask you to be with the, this festivity church here. Lord, as uh, we try to spread the gospel, that it will go not on you. Your Lord, we just Pray that you be a brother Collins and family. Pray that your heavenly father that they give you moral and spiritual leadership. Lord, again we ask you to be with all the people that are here to pray for, our soldiers, the Lord, the leaders of our nation, Lord, and all the true churches of this land and country. We ask this in the name of Jesus and wish.
We've got more up front. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. We got a more back up third. The office called third. On the other side. There's some good reviews. Yes, he did. Thank you. Very good.